Yo. Who the fuck you think you talking to? <laughs> no! Not in my house! You know, normally this this would be seem unnormal, but it's Dion, so you good? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I that. I'm so that I need to mute. No. Man, you come straight out of a car. Well, yo, man, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Straight Out of a Comic Book. If you are a fan of Will Ferrell, then you already have seen this show. You've even seen one of the guests that I have here today on the show. And so you know what the show is about. The, sh the title says itself, well, Straight Out of a Comic Book. It's comic books. It's, it's nerd entertainment, black black nerds, black geeks, street nerds, whatever terms we're going to get into. Um, and somebody also on this show is definitely going to be breaking them terms down later into the future, but we'll get into that a little bit later. So today's episode, I have three guests with me who are very versatile. I don't think people talk about the versatility when it comes to actors, influencers, producers, writers, podcasts, entertainers, everything. Y'all need, need a new word. I will say that y'all should definitely start looking yeah. for a new occupation because Renaissance Man is dope, but <laughs> let me be honest, I ain't know what Renaissance Man is until <laughs> somebody told me earlier. <laughs> I just kept thinking Dark Ages and people that don't take showers. I'm like, I don't want to be linked to that. <laughs> but, but ladies and gentlemen, nonetheless, today we have some epicness going on today. Today's uh guest we have today, first off, like we said. Very versatile. Um, what's the term that they use? Uh, Renaissance. Blank, no, not Renaissance. Uh, jack of all oh, trades. Mm. Jack of all trades. This is a jack of all trades episode. Also, I don't know if y'all knew, there's an end to that part people don't say all the time. People will go. Jack of all oh, trades. Yep. A jack of all trades, but a master of none. none. Yeah. But a jack of all trades is always better than a master of all one. one. Yeah. And believe me, everybody <laughs> that has one at their top could not match any of these people on their worst day. We're going to start with the man to the bottom. You can see him on his Just Us League podcast with Doughboy. You can also see his sing along showcases and pretty much any show that he thinks in his head, you will see get produced, popped out, <laughs> tested, and it's always a hit. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to introduce y'all to CT, a.k.a. Clayton Thomas, is in the building. My man, amazing introduction. Thank you for having me, brother. Oh, man, appreciate it, man. Thank you. And, of course... Same same type of energy, man. You have seen him now on all deaf. You have seen him raise my blood pressure on black blasphemy with the statements that he has said. But outside of that, this man is also on that same entrepreneurial spirit with his own studio with lactose entertainment. And of course, not another damn podcast. Another person that can just roll out the hits. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dion Lack has joined us today here in the building. <laughs> I had to do the intro like I was a, a guest pastor. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, hey, man. Let me hey, man. Just say, man. And then you got to move things around. Uh, by the grace of God, I'd like to say uh, thank y'all for having me. I'd like to give a shout to my first lady. I, I wouldn't be with nothing without her. Y'all know that. Mm -hmm. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. And last and certainly not least, man, this man is definitely making the runnings. I want to call him rookie of the year, but I feel like you already bypassed that because if you check out mm. his podcast, this man has all kinds of celebrities on there, man, <laughs> from far and wide. And it just continues to keep growing. He is a part of the Geek Set podcast, which is now expanded into almost, if, if memory serves me correct, you can get five to seven days of content each week. Coming Ooh. very soon. Also, the one on one with Deuces as well. Ladies and gentlemen, the young Deuces is in the building today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for having me, man. Like I said, you know, I told you guys in pre production that I, I, this has been one of my goals is to start getting on with more creators and doing more things. So, man, I do appreciate you having me and, you know, showcasing me towards, you know, your, your fan base and your followers and the people that support you. Oh, yeah, Questions, Will, before you uh, continue, if I may, 
Uh, Dion, are you drinking water out of a simply lemonade? Oh bottle? man, why does everybody bring that up, man? I just yes. I saw you take a drink. Yes, it's a simply <laughs> bottle, and I, and I and I put this up in there in the freezer. Every, yeah. every podcast, you know, let me live. I like that handle. I like yeah. the handle. Look you at the out of pocket. Dion, flawless. You should keep, I want you to sit that on that table. You, you are know. making too much money, Dion. <laughs> no, that, that's why you keep doing it. That's why you keep doing it, Dion. Because as soon as you pulled it up, I was like, outstanding. Because I was right behind that green screen, right? Now. Do you also have some tuna fish inside of a country crock butter? Oh. The funny thing is, we've been talking 15 minutes prior to this play. We're like, wait till we press record. I'm getting it. <laughs> this is the first time I saw you take the drink, bro. Damn, i <laughs> And it takes up, it take up half the screen about how big it is. So there's no way for us not to. <laughs> D.I. <laughs> oh, my God. Represent, represent. Because it's like, you know, like, think about it. If you didn't see the green top, you exactly. would have said Exactly. Nothing. nothing. <laughs> You'd have been good. So Every podcast, I've been mean, sure. like, hey, is that the same one? You goddamn right it is, man. <laughs> D.I. <Dion. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> That's not yeah. even all water. It's still got juice particles from when oh, you get it. You're like, is that pulp right. swimming in the water? What's going on? <laughs> all right. This is what I gotta start doing now, like it's a 40. It's just a little <laughs> bit just a flavor burst. No, that's even worse. That is that's worse. worse. <laughs> if it was a paper bag without a green top, perhaps. Oh my god. I feel like if you don't play some <laughs> Oh my goodness, man. I'm glad that y'all came with that energy, man, because I know it's, it's going to be the same type of energy with what we're discussing. Today. He's doing too well, Will. He has two studios. <laughs> right. That in downtown Los Angeles. Oh my God. You can take Dion out of the trenches. You can't take the trenches out of Dion. You cannot oh, take man. the trenches out of Dion, boy. He's still in Ohio on his mind. That's what's the wrong, bro. It has worked. This is worse for the past two years, man. <laughs> but why is it just you don't want cups? I, I need to well, know if you so, like me. It's so, like so, so, so. Every time when I'm editing, I always use it. But before I leave, I put like a little bit of water in there, put it in the freezer, and that's the chunk of ice. When I next day I, I fill it up with my, you know, my filtered water, and that's my water all over again. And it, you know, I ain't got to keep refilling it for. The whole eight hours I'm drinking it. So you've so, never yeah. completed a bottle of water, is what you also telling us. Yeah, yeah. I, I leave a little <laughs> bit at the bottom of it. So, it's no. the oh, so like you leave a lot of it in the middle. <laughs> You're right. I think a, lot, a lot of a lot of that wash in there. <laughs> you ain't <laughs> finishing <laughs> your water. <laughs> I still got Delta in there. I got I got that Delta in there. <laughs> Jeez Louise. I'm sorry, Will Farrell. I'm sorry. Oh no, 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 no. I'm glad you pointed that out. Man, uh, that, that's gonna be Dion's Easter egg in the world. <laughs> that's what all started. That's where it all started. <laughs> oh my goodness, y'all! But yes, no. Uh, nonetheless, though, today we are talking about the Marvel MCU for 2022, kicking off Phase Five, Four, Four, Five. I think it's Five. I um, well, yeah, I think Phase Five now. Is yeah. what we're in. Yeah. Um, and you know, just to catch people up, you know, um, they have really bust out when it comes to the whole multiverse thing and stuff like that. So um, not only have they expanded across the MCU as far as theater goes, it's now coming to television as well with Disney Plus series and having to uh, also be in tune with those because it's now tying into the film. So Disney has done a great job with Marvel in expanding this MCU, but we want to focus on 2022 and what's coming ahead. We already seen Spider-Man No Way From Home killing the box office, killing it Kill already it. already in the top 10 of the highest grossing films mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. theaters man yeah if you didn't yeah. like that first, movie, first time i jumped up and screamed in the theaters that was the first yeah. time i ever jumped up like my kids was embarrassed i'm like i'm sorry i grew up to toby 
Yes. Oh, Toby, yeah. that was the greatest Spider-Man movie of all time. And oh. they fixed everything wrong with both of their <laughs> franchises. They you did. fixed it. First of all, let's also address, like, I get the political statement as far as we can't have Venom in here because we haven't introduced it to Tom Holland. However, we're not going to act like Topher Grace wasn't the worst Venom of all time because they brought back Sandman. <laughs> and yeah. Yeah. Of Venom, and he was in the same movie. <laughs> Yes. Woo! Yeah. yeah. That was but cool. he literally said, yeah. "I fought an alien," so he definitely acknowledged him. No, he said, "I fought a guy in black goo." <laughs> That's, That's the saying. difference. Yeah. <laughs> but why he didn't show up? And he clearly knew who uh, who uh, Spider Man was. He, he was That's what, horrible. That's what I didn't understand, though. So, like, if you see Venom, uh, let there be carnage, and you see the Easter egg. Mm -hmm. What does so, so so that's. Yeah, and but what does who? And that's why that's why uh, Tom Hardy's character got transferred over with with Venom in there. That's why he got transferred into a universe at the end. Right, but Will is saying, why didn't he show up? Yeah, and you I'm saying the reason he didn't show up is because he the reason he didn't show up was only to leave that little piece of Venom left, yeah. so he could be introduced to Tom Holland Spider-Man differently than running into Tom Hardy. So by the time he runs into Tom Hardy, it will have already, you know, been through him. Cause I would assume that will be the next movie. And then Tom Hardy and him can have their thing, but it would make no sense for Tom Hardy's venom to go to Tom Holland because it's like, that's not the venom that uh, Spider-Man runs into. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and talking and to him a, and shit, buddy. And, there's, a, and there's another tie into that, I think, too, as well. Um, because one of the things I thought about was Venom knew who Spider Man was, mm. and it was like, How do you know that? But then when I thought about what he said before it happened, I've been around a lot, and that mm. makes me think history well, is repeating itself. And we well, have, and I don't want to get into too much of it because well, we well, know. I was going to get into answer. the reason why Venom does know it is because of the hive mind. So that's what he was right before the. Oh. Uh, and what he was saying was all venoms across all universes they share the same hive mind that's what that's the whole concept of that ah, and the reason okay. why he knew who spider-man was but or peter parker was is in a sense is because in a, one of those universes, which was toby's universe a venom did interact with a spider-man already so mm. that's why he knew already because of the hive mind that they share and what the other uh, symbiote share that makes perfect sense and that thank you for saying sense. that yeah, yeah. There we go. So yeah. So just yeah. So just like that, with knowing these, like us breaking these uh clues and Easter eggs down, so we want to get into Marvel's MCU's. We are trying to predict what's going to happen in 2022. And since we're already talking about Spider Man, I think that's probably one of the best ways to start off. And I'm going to shoot it to uh Young Deuces uh with his prediction. Now we've come with uh three predictions today from our guests, and we're trying to get all uh, try to get all of them covered in this episode. But Young Deuces, I want to throw it to you. And let us know what do you think your first prediction is going to be since we are talking about Spider Man right now. Right. So, my actual prediction, as far as with the Venom uh, symbiote, what we're going to get, I don't think that we're going to get Eddie Brock in the MCU. My belief is that we're going to get Flash Thompson's um, Agent Venom because, so when you think about like where what Sony did with the with uh, no way uh, uh, no way home and, and everything they're pretty much setting up their trilogy so that that way they can introduce you know the um, uh, Spider-Man's role gallery some of his um, his peers and everything like that so there's going to be a while that Spider-Man's going to be out of the movies so in order to have that symbiote run wild with Agent Venom and, and getting Flash Thompson or even getting Venomized other heroes I believe we're going to get that first because you know at this point. That, that symbiote that's still there is going to have to latch on to somebody until it gets to, you know, to Spider-Man, which if I, if my prediction is the way it's set up, Sony ain't giving us Spider-Man for the next at least nine years. Like I said, we're going to have Spider-Man in Sony world and, you know, bits and pieces, but they'll, he'll eventually come back to the MCU. And then that's when we'll finally get the Venom and Spider-Man that, um, uh, you know, battle that we, that we all want. But I do believe that the first Venom that we're actually going to see is Flash Thompson's Venom. And I think that they're going to change that character, Flash Thompson, that we've seen. They're going to change him a little bit to, to fit that uh, so that way we can get the Agent Venom. Okay. Okay. So 
Here's my so here's my question with that. So since we've seen uh Spider-Man Far from uh No Way Home, we are aware, and just for anybody that hasn't seen it, um if you, you played yourself, it, you played yourself. We're not we're not, we're not <laughs> holding back no spoilers no. or anything. Yeah. Like we talking, we talking, talking. Yeah. It's been a um, month. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been yeah, yeah. So it's like <laughs> if you don't know, you don't know. But if not, please, you know, click off, go watch something else on this channel. But if you have seen it, stay right here. Yeah, what we are aware of is that. Flash Thompson, uh, MJ, and um, I always forget Ned. his name. Ned. Ned. Yeah. Ned. Because I, I don't want to call him Ned Flanders, and I'm like, it ain't Ned. It's not Ned. It's something else. I was like, but then you hear Ned, I'm like, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. <laughs> They've all went to MIT. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they're all over there now, which means they're all in Boston along with the new Iron Man, Riri Williams, which is uh, Ironheart now. So all of them are at school there. So mm -hmm. I guess my question would be is how are we going to see Flash Thompson come like play into this? You know what I'm saying? Because like Flash Thompson, like in the comic books, like, you know, really went from that school bully to yeah. going to the army, getting into P having that PSD kind of happening, then going into Agent Venom. So I'm just curious from your perspective, how would you see them looping that in with the current Flash Thompson that they're portraying now? Well, that's why I said that I think that they're going to change his character up a little bit because he was more so just like the the rich jerk, you know. That's mm -hmm. how that's how he's been established in this universe so far. So with the, with that MIT and then like what he's going to what he's going to be dealing with, I do believe at some point he may hit a you know a dark point because you know he wasn't he wasn't the smartest out of the bunch and everything. So it's like I feel like he's going to hit a dark point and he's going to get introduced to the symbiote. I, now I don't believe that the Flash Thompson symbiote and Venom. I don't believe that that's going to last very long but that's going to be that first introduction because in order for us to get to the whole spider-man bout because one of the reasons why venom like he hates spider-man is because once he merged with spider-man he's never felt that power before so when spider-man rejected him he it, it created this animosity against them and then also eddie brock already didn't like peter parker you know so it was like that was the perfect combination so in order to get to that first though venom has to be able to, he has to flourish he has to you know grab his certain people so i believe that it's not necessarily agent venom actually working on something but we'll get that venom get hints of that agent venom but uh, like i said it's not going to be anything that's last longer it'd be you know third act in a movie or something of that nature that, that i believe that we're going to get or just you know that moment of you know maybe just even one fight but it's that moment of that symbiote latching on to him because Right now, we don't have an Eddie Brock in this universe of the MCU, and I think that I don't. I just don't foresee MCU creating a new Eddie Brock when we already got this Eddie Brock that the world has uh, seemingly grown to love in Sony right now. So I just feel like in the, or either they go Agent Venom or they just go Venomized characters, where the symbiotes start latching. They go real. They go. They dive into the comic books like, oh yeah, we're gonna get a Venomized Hulk, and then we may get a Venomized this person and Venomized this person just for those moments to show that. This symbiote that's on this world, even that little small piece, that is a problem that needs to be uh, addressed. So that's my yeah. prediction around with that. Okay. Hmm. Oh, hmm. C uh, CT, what about you? What are your thoughts? With that, I I can go along with that. The only thing that I can't go along with is that they wouldn't create an Eddie Brock for this because, and this will tie into my point later. Marvel has introduced the multiverse now, and by them introducing the multiverse, this mm -hmm. allows the gen the general public to accept the fact that there are more than one person on each universe, right? Or each, yeah, I can't say planet. Each universe has its own person. So we saw the Tom Hardy in Sony's Eddie Brock and Venom, but this also fixes the horrible movie that was Let There Be Carnage. Because <laughs> now in Marvel, they can say, all right, we have our own Cassidy. We have our own Brock. We have our own all of these types of people so you can retell the story and tell it better. And at the same time, you're able to show this in an Andrew Garfield universe, or if you decide to bring, like they will be, bringing Toby back for cameo appearances or even a mentorship role for the Miles yeah. Morales joint, because they already said they signed a deal with Marvel to do three more films. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's going to be the Miles Morales joint or if that's going to be uh, Andrew Garfield. 
So do you think, because if so, I, I, I like your, your thought process on that, but then that means that that would be Marvel's first time really busting it open besides the Spider-Man. Because right now, the only one that was confirmed that we actually seen physical embodiments of the same person was Spider-Man. Now, granted, uh-huh. like I said, if they do that, then that, I mean, yes, with the mo- opening the multiverse, it does open that. I just, yeah. I, um, my, I, I, my, I guess my thought process was how soon is Marvel going to actually do that? Actually, well, two open. things. Yeah. One, I feel like you just wanted to say bust it open uh, <laughs> because that, hadn't, that did not fit anywhere. But like you just wanted to say it. Two, we can't ignore the fact that Dion Lack's internet was choppy as fuck and has yes. been showing up for the last 10 minutes. And outside of that is seeing exactly what we saw. They left it open ended, right? Yeah, Marvel, yeah. because they had this deal with Sony, um, when they fell out during part two, which was uh, Far From Home, I felt like this movie was Marvel being like, all right, we fixed the problem just in case y'all want to be on some weird shit again. <laughs> y'all can have y'all character back. We didn't yeah. ruin our universe. We told a story that was perfect. And we hit you with nobody remembers who Spider Man's real identity is. So, what that does is, it erases every connection that Peter Parker had. And if you go back and look at Infinite, uh, Infinity War and Endgame, he led with I'm Peter Parker. Even yeah. his moment with uh, Captain Marvel. Hi, yeah. Peter Parker. Uh, yeah. You have something for me? Yeah. It wasn't I'm Spider-Man. So now that all of these things have been erased, his relationship with Happy, his relationship with Tony mm-hmm. Stark, now he's mm-hmm. completely, completely anonymous. People don't know. And they didn't have that much of a bond with Spider-Man right. like they did with Peter Parker. So it's like, all right, cool. We forget this person. Even Doctor Strange forgets, and he's the one who created the spell. Yeah. So I feel like now that they've released him back to Sony and they've completed their issues on there, I mean, they completed the story on their end, I feel like what we'll start to see is a break from Tom Holland. Although they did confirm Spider-Man 4 already. Yeah. And, and, and that's going to be Tom Holland. And just to piggyback on that, though, we may be like I know because the multiverse has been introduced, we mm-hmm. may be trying to get a little like so much into the go like yo all of these pieces. Honestly, just to like go off of what you just said, they've kind of laid it out for us very plainly because now they set it up to where we are at the Spider Man that we know, the one where he's broke in New York. Yeah. And the way they set everything up, we now get back to our original stuff. <laughs> Dion Lack, bro, read his name. I'm sorry, Will. I, I'm looking at you and Dion's face. <laughs> and I look down at his name. <laughs> no, but I'm much better. <laughs> you bastard. Oh, but yes, Will, please continue your point because you're absolutely right, bro. Oh, yes. So, uh, <laughs> but, uh just saying, like, welcome to your lag <laughs> back. I know you have some issues. Bad. Bad. So welcome back. It's all good. But, um, the fact that they've set it up back now to where we're kind of getting that original sense of Spider Man. And so, the way I see it now, like you said, he's broke. He's now in that uh, bummy apartment, which I definitely hope they bring back the Sam Raimi uh, apartment attendant. And I Ooh, hope it's him. As his attend- Yo, it would be so great. But yeah. just seeing from No Way Home, like, I can now see him going work at the Daily Bugle since it's yes. a media oh, yeah. yeah, And how it ties in now since it's not a newspaper anymore. But what it does is it gets us set up for a mirror version of Eddie Brock. Because mm-hmm. of the simple fact, if you remember Venom, he already said there was an incident in New York that happened that forced him to go back to San Francisco. And it mm-hmm. can be the same thing that may be transpiring in this earth as well. So yeah. Eddie Brock already may be running around and then that's how him and Tom Holland's character collides because of them chasing the same stories. And then mm-hmm. that can also be the same thing of with Venom being left at that island. Of course, old boy that's in the bartender catches it. We've known them to start traveling through different hosts. And right. eventually gets caught, gets put in a tube, gets brought to a government lab. Peter Parker goes to uh, cover the story, same as uh, Tom, uh, Tom Hardy's character. And then, bam, the Venom suit is now here. We get the full Spider-Man emblem, and now we can go into that story of really getting Venom. And that also sucks for the Venom part of the symbol because then we'd be in Venom 3 
before we actually got the symbol of the white spider. Oh, However, yeah. to go along with your point, I feel like it's even more simple than that. And I think that they spread these uh, these little nuggets on us in No Way Home where they showed that MJ in this universe is Michelle Jones. Yeah. And in Toby's universe, it was Mary Jane. And Gwen Stacy was his Mary Jane, right? right? So I say that to say that maybe in this universe, because this Tom Holland doesn't have a Harry, he has a Ned. So yeah. maybe in this universe, it won't be a mirror version of Eddie Brock. It'll just be Flash. Like, it's easy for Flash to get an internship at the Daily Bugle as well. And then they continue with this character that we've already known. Just like we'd already figured, yo, I can't believe they haven't even discussed Uncle Ben. And then when Aunt May dies, we realize why. Because she was the one who's supposed to deliver the speech. Because in their universe, their Uncle Ben died. Here, Aunt May dies, which shows why he never brings up Uncle Ben. So if we get a... a, a uh, if Flash has the internship and maybe he's competing with Peter because that rivalry is still there because he doesn't know he's Spider-Man, that makes sense for one of the hosts to bring it from Mexico to bring it to New York. Uh, then Tom Holland gets it. And as soon as he rejects it, it goes to Flash. Mm -hmm. And now they have a back and forth. And then towards the end of the movie, when he thinks he gets rid of it, maybe he sees Eddie Brock come to New York or it's a possibility we could even have two Venoms, and he realizes one is good and one is bad. Yeah, because they they played around with that storyline before in the comics, but to kind of go back to one thing that Will said and bring it in, kind of like what they established with the Miles Morales game. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we know that the Daily Bugle was not the paper no more; it's more so digital. So yeah. if we think about in the digital space, what's what can Peter do with the pictures of Spider Man? He gonna have a popping ass Instagram mm -hmm. or whatever you know, whatever app that they create oh, yeah. in that universe. And you know who would be a good intern? Maybe somebody from MIT. Maybe Flash interning at this place that is. You know the the lead in the news. You know the bugle bugle app X. Dot, you know whatever the mm -hmm. app name is, and then Flash is uh uh you know he he's an intern there. But you know he, Peter is you know the top Spider Man photographer. So now Flash is like you know you like. Like I remember because like he don't remember him, but I, I'm assuming that once interactions happens, they'll have certain memory. Like I remember I went to high school with you, but you you couldn't make it at MIT like me, so that's where they beef starts or something like that. Like it, like there's like you said, there's little nuggets that they laid because with MIT and with it being a lead in technology and everything, that's probably how it's going to get back to Flash and um, you know and Peter um, reconnecting and possibly and rekindling that beef that was already there. So. I can see that too. I think this memory loss is going to be a one-off. They're not going to go too long. They're going to figure out a way to. I think after multiverse, uh, uh, Doctor Strange multiverse, it's going to fix some things and kind of like make people remember because it's too much continuity to to connect Tom Holland's memory gone mm -hmm. with so many people he's attached. He was like on. He's on like he was on like uh, uh, Thanos's uh, you know homes planet and you know. Yeah. He, he was everywhere, so like, like to 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 fix that, like to say, do I know you? Do I remember you? Like all those moments is like it's too much to fix and to keep moving forward with the with phase, you know, phase five. So I think they're gonna yeah. fix it in Doctor Strange. And I think, the, and just to piggyback on Dion too, we also have to remember, like he said, Doctor Strange is that huge tie-in because remember, this is a spell. Spells right. can be broken. That's yeah. all that is. That's all this, especially with the multiverse going on and him trying to fix things. And uh, we've already seen MJ's memory slightly start to come back when we see yeah. her in the coffee scene. Yeah. So again, this is just a memory that can be broken. But one thing we do, we are kind of also forgetting is little pieces that also can be tied in to make this easier. Because now that Tom is in New York, we forget about Felicia Hardy now. Because we don't have an MJ, we mm -hmm. don't have a Gwen, we can get a Felicia and yep. a Black Cat story, which mm -hmm. also now again ties in Eddie Brock to be put in because Eddie Brock was the one that had a huge crush on Felicia, but then yeah. she was more tied in with Spider-Man, which would build his hatred for me. But that's why I think it's going to be Flash. Because Sony making a huge mistake of creating a Venom movie without the White Spider, and the this version of Venom, which is like, don't get me wrong, I saw both films, but it's like, fam, this is not... I don't no, want to see a buddy cop with Venom. But, but do you, you want to... So, so for this MCU, though, 
Yeah. Do you want Agent Venom or do you want the terrifying Venom? Because just like how uh, Young Dudes brought up Miles Morales' game, mm-hmm. remember the trailer for Spider Man's two uh, uh, video, video game. game. When he popped out, uh, like yeah. that's the Venom I want in the yeah. MCU. Yeah. Well, I want him. But scared. that's Harry. We know yeah. that's Harry. Yeah. So that's the difference. It's like, are we going to get just because it's Flash doesn't mean that we're gonna get Agent Venom. This could still be straight up Venom because Flash having a crush on Felicia Hardy even pushes it further for them to not like each other. And you got to remember, even though he doesn't remember Peter Parker, that me- just because you don't remember a motherfucker you don't like doesn't mean when you meet them again, you <laughs> right. won't like them. Yeah, right. You know what I'm saying? And, it's and, I forgot, you, and I forgot you just tied it in perfectly on how that could work. Yeah. Um, you know, and I know it's probably far, but it'd be funny as hell. Flash Thompson drops out of MIT and becomes the social media director for the Daily Bugle. <laughs> so yeah, because we forgot he's a social media star when he was in high school. Yes. So with 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 Doctor Strange's spell, and I just thought about this: is it just the world or is it the universe? Because remember. Okay, because I was going to say, because remember, you know, um, Nick Fury, he he's off into space. So was yeah. he impacted by, or when he comes back, is he going to be the only one that, like, y'all don't remember Peter? Like, because, like, like, you know, I don't know how far that spell ran. I think it was always, it, go ahead. It was all universes because he brought all the people from the different universes. Right. New people okay. in here, so it's going to be reversed. Okay. So yeah. now, and that was the thing of them showing like the power of like uh, how powerful words are. So that's why I was just like, even when he said it's like I we're saying it wrong. For one, I say Peter Parker, and now I've just mentioned eight hundred different versions yeah. of Peter Parker. Yeah. And so now just like a computer, yeah, I'm now searching computer. all of those and I've just now messed up the CPU. And and that's why everything's cracking. There's a random dude in, in Buffalo who has a name Peter Parker. He's like, yo, why nobody don't know me? <laughs> yeah. Yo, right? Yeah. I ironically have a Peter Parker as a name. Yo, when I heard that, the thing that made me love that aspect of nobody's gonna know who Peter Parker is in any universe, it made me happy because something that y'all don't know about me is I, I respect uh the actors and i know that when you're wearing a costume you want your face to be seen as an actor but something that annoys me is in every superhero movie or tv show their identities get figured out by every one of their villains so it was like when he said nobody's gonna know who you are i loved it because that meant that it reconned everything that happened with toby spider-man meaning venom knowing who he was sandman Doc Ock, Green Goblin, Harry, Mary Jane, like every, too many people were knowing. So that's why it was even more poetic at the end of No Way Home that he had nobody. He had to stitch his costume himself. He didn't have a guy in a chair. He didn't have anybody that was a weakness for him. Aunt May being gone means he's going to be working at Feast part time as well. Yep. And I loved it. Also, mm-hmm. too, one thing to throw in there that we, we hadn't maybe thought of, too. Mm-hmm. Who's to not say that's not the same thing that happens to Andrew and Toby when they go home? Because oh as it said, it's Spider-Man, no way home. And since, yeah, and since they've altered all of their histories oh. and Goblin didn't die, Octavius didn't die. So does that mean oh. Gwen is still alive? Does that mean he never got a part of the Venom suit? Oh, no, I don't still- think- I don't think I don't think the people that died is coming back because right. if you think, remember he pulled them right from the moment where they was about to be killed. So right. likely what ended up happening is they just went back to that moment and they're just like, oh shit, I'm fighting Peter, I'm, I'm fighting Spider Man, but Spider Man didn't kill me this time. Like so they and they feel better. They don't feel as evil as they used to. So I, I feel like they just got put back into here and they're, and they're not as evil. But I don't yeah I don't think the people that died are coming back. I think Gwen still. But that, no, but those that, cha- are but still that changes everything though. But that yes. changes everything. So oh, that's start- Everything, yeah. So start with Andrews. If Electro doesn't fight him, Gwen never dies. Ever. If Lizard never happens to that, he gets put in prison, which means Andrew might already be dealing with his version of the Sinister Six already. And we don't even know that yet. Because remember, in the first Amazing Spider-Man, Lizard got locked up. Yeah, so yeah. we don't know how he broke out, how any of that happened. Now, but we also know he killed her father before he was locked up. Yeah, And yeah. you got to remember this. The biggest detail, these are all great details, but the biggest detail is you notice how Toby worded it's complicated with Mary Jane, right? Mm -hmm. Because had he said we're married or we're living life together, 
the forgetting who Peter Parker is would have impacted them as well. So now he damn near gets a fresh start with her because she doesn't know Peter Parker. Yeah. And, but, and, uh, and Andrew, Andrew uh, Garfield, he he said uh, he, started, he started pulling his punches. So his whole he got dark as hell. He he, he yeah. was like young people. Uh, he yeah. said he never he never got back to you know you know where he was a a, a friendly Spider Man. So he went to neighborhood Spider Man. Because like when all the villains go back, Doc Ock, Doc Ock was he's gonna go back to the time where uh, his 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 machine was needed needed to be drowned. So if he goes back to that phase, he still needs to drown that thing because it can't survive there because it's going to suck up the whole thing. So but, he has to kill himself again. But hold on, but hold on. Let's let's go back even further. Green Goblin ain't Green Goblin no more. And remember, it was the nanotech that he made that got Doc Ock to make that. Oh, so no, if he doesn't that. die and survives, what's the advancement on nanotech to where Doc Ock would never have that problem? You know, oh, wow. I'm something of a scientist myself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, was so, I was so deep when he dropped that line. Yeah, I, yeah. I felt like I, like my theater that I went to, there was a lot of moments that the theater cheered. The theater cheered a lot on, on that line because it was like, yo, like it's the line. It's the yeah. line. <laughs> he delivered it with so much swag. But you know, yeah. something of a scientist myself. There's something that we're forgetting. And it's just the fiction. There's something that we're forgetting and that we are forgetting how powerful the Spider-Verse is. Because I'm wondering what their connection still with each other. Because remember, even in the Mirrorverse, when um, when Strange uh, uh, pushed Peter out of his body, the reason why he was still able to move with the box is because his Spider-Verse doesn't interact with the same multiverse or Mirrorverse. The Spider-Verse is something completely different out of that multiverse. So oh. now that adds another layer to it. Like, okay, so if everybody may not know, but y'all three still know each other and remember what happened here, how does that play into the story now too? Wait a second, wait a second. Are you saying the Spider-Verse is similar to... Uh, the Spider-Verse is similar to the... what? Is it? Man, and I'm a DC guy. It's similar to the Flash's uh, Speed, Speed Force. Force. Speed Force, thank you. The yes. That really. Yeah, that's that's because that because I went when because I, I was racking my brain trying to figure out why was he able like when when Strange pushed him out of his body. Yeah. he should not have been able to react to that. Right. And he did it I, thought so it was, I thought it was his body. I thought it was. Oh no, it's his, his pot. Yeah, it's the spot. It's the spider. He, the spider says they yeah, had nothing to do with his soul. Yeah. It's the body's reaction. Yeah, it's the spider sense. Yeah, so but that's what I thought you were going with. Well, it, it, it kind of still all ties in. The spider verse, yeah. the spider sense, all of that. Again, and like you said, with, with Flash and the Speed Force. The Speed Force is like this separate entity that houses so much power and energy and why the Flash has is probably one of the most OP characters in DC that like a lot of people don't realize because there's so much that he can do with that speed force. That's the same thing with the Spider-Verse and the whole multi like that dimension in the Spider-Verse the way that I can that I when I was reading up on it that they explained it it was like if you take the 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 main timeline like, yes, we have that main timeline. We have all these multiverses that branch off. Within the main timeline, there is another alternate universe that's within it that does not operate off of the same wavelength as what happens in the multiverse. So technically, there is this, this verse that only the spy, like people who are, who, are, who are tapped into that Spider-Verse can deal with, again, essentially just like the Speed Force. So now I'm just trying to figure out how does that play in the storyline? Like, if magic is impacting the multiverse, the mirrorverse, and everything else that we establish, does it also impact? impact the spider-verse that same or is it separate i think i think you called it more to i think the spider the spider-verse i think it's more linked to like how you said with their spidey sense as venom is with the hive because if mm, you remember yeah. when yeah. they were looking for peter toby mm -hmm. said i sent something yeah and so it's like yo how did you sense that from a different universe so that makes me think there's a lot more depth to this spidey sense yeah. that we really have thought about outside of him knowing when danger is coming this may be actually what connects all of them into the multiverse is their spider sense yeah can with I, that said that? please say something to you. i'm sorry because i feel like your internet connection was it ruined the the tempo of the conversation so you missed so much and i'm like damn i feel bad I I heard all this. All right, cool, cool, cool. Okay, so, so, um, I think, I think the Marvel just right now is doing way too much right now. 
with the time travel, with the multiverse, the scrolls, the the broken absolute points, Loki's timeline, you know, the spider verses. Like y'all shouldn't have given us the, all this in phase five. And now it's like anything can happen. And I hate that. I think they should have broke up these in phases. And it's like, 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 let us like like savor this, man. Like, don't give us all of these options right now. And not to mention, no one talked about eternals. When that huge well, we, well, we well, I'm glad I'm glad you brought that up. I'm glad we you were. brought it up because we don't want to stay too 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 boggled down into just, just Spider-Man. So and I know we got a lot to talk about. Uh, and this most definitely probably is gonna get breaking down into a two-parter. So speaking of Eternals, I want to go ahead and throw it to CT because CT, I believe the Eternals was a part, one of the part of your predictions for Marvel 2022. So CT, the stage is yours. I appreciate it. Here's what I will say, uh, gentlemen. When you look at Eternals, whether you loved it, whether you hated it, whether you thought too much was going on, because it was, uh, when you look at Eternals, the film, Eternals should have been a 25-minute science fiction documentary by Marvel to just explain Celestials. That's the, that's the only reason this movie exists. The reason that Eternals exists is to set up Galactus. That's the only reason. Mm -hmm. When you look at Celestials and you see how massive they were and you see exactly what their purposes are, that gives you a backdoor pilot and explanation into what Galactus is because Galactus is a Celestial. Galactus is this person that is the world eater and it goes exactly what these people have been doing for millennia and what the Eternals have been, which are robots to create um, to uh, create celestials in order for the planets to be destroyed, right? So, man, that movie was so much. Oh my God, yeah. there were so many things in it that he crammed in. I felt those were two things that Marvel missed the mark on, which was the Eternals and What If. However, the final one of the final episodes of What If seems like it's paying off for the Doctor Strange Multiverse yeah. of Madness. But when I look at the predictions, it's to set up Galactus, which will then in turn set up Silver Surfer. It will help show you why the X-Men will make sense in this universe, which is also what Multiverse of Madness will do. Mm -hmm. Doctor, uh, Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness. What this will do is this will fix every single thing that has happened with all of the Fox films as far as X-Men. It will fix everything is in terms of the Marvel Cinematic Universe holes. It will literally give you why Kang the Conqueror is so important because Kang the Conqueror deals with time and timelines. Mm -hmm. And that goes to Loki. Loki was specifically created to show you all of these things that we'd seen for the past 10 years matter minutely right they show you in the first episode when he's trying to get his hands on the infinity stones and they're like oh yeah they're paperweights and he's they, like oh yeah what? these little things I'm I'm like, wow. Wow. <laughs> what? the thing i've known for 10 years is just a paperweight so it goes so the first 10 years of marvel and this is what we always tell people in comedy it's like the reason you see so many comedians do surface level material is because we know as an audience what you can handle, right? Mm -hmm. There are like, of course, in New York and L.A., people's minds are more uh, open to the possibility of anything because we live on both of these coasts. However, somebody who's in Ohio or somebody that's in Tennessee isn't trying to hear all of these crazy things that people are into. They just want they steak medium or well done. Right. So what Marvel mm -hmm. had to do for 10 years, and that's why Spider-Man, I'm jumping ahead of myself. That's why the amazing Spider-Man two was so incredible is because they killed Gwen Stacy. Right now, I didn't agree with this. I didn't even like that part of the movie, but they killed Gwen Stacy and they were about six years too soon yeah. in doing this for a theatrical audience. When mm -hmm. theatrical audiences want to see a, a superhero movie, they want to see the hero win. They want to see the hero get the girl in this movie. They left you on a somber note because that's what happened in the comic books. So what yeah. Marvel had to do for 10 years was get you prepared to start it with Iron Man and to end that phase with Iron Man dying because mm -hmm. they're like, what? I'm not ready for this. After we seen Iron Man die, of course we can handle anybody else dying. We got attached <laughs> to this dude. Yeah. You feel me? So now what you're about to see is going to blow your mind. Yeah. I, I got two things I want to say with Eternals. One, 
the way that they did the Celestials is a uh, bro. Like I thought that that was the most amazing part about the movie to show how massive that they truly are. Like when you see that scene and you just see the eyes in the back and you just like, like that, that was, that was, that was really dope. My heart dropped. I was yeah. like, bro, like this, there's nothing you can do for that. And I like how they, how in the movie, it first start off like where they don't show him first. They show like just a little bit, just to show like, yo, I want you to know how massive yeah. he really is. And then when it pans all the way out and you yeah. see him and it's just like, this is you and then this is them. And it's like, yo, yeah, y'all just made up for uh, <laughs> fan, uh, uh, Fantastic Four too. You yes. just made up. Yeah. Thank you, bro. Thank you. Massive. The goal to what CT was saying, and I guess this is partial, like kind of some of my prediction, is that to me, Kang is more so going to be like the new Loki, where he's the big bad, but he's not the biggest bad. Galactus is the biggest bad. That's he's going to be the Thanos threat. And so I agree with you on that, with like Eternal setting that up and really and really just trying to get us prepared for. This, these celestial beings and everything and showing the damage that they really can do. I also so love that you have an really office fun. on Dion Lack. That was amazing. I feel like uh, <laughs> you in your office and, yeah, and the big boss got you all. <laughs> right, right. Hold on, y'all. Yeah, hello? Yeah, yeah, yes, sir. Yeah. You didn't hear what uh, y'all did. EOD, EOD, yeah. Yep. <laughs> I have to follow your best now. <laughs> But but Deuce is like to, to for what you said about Galactus, though I think that also ties into one of your predictions as well. Because now talking about Galactus and Silver Surfer, it leads to, of course, the Fantastic Four being now brought into here. And then also something like you had just mentioned with Kang the Conqueror kind of being the Loki. I think Kang is going to be the person that introduces us to Doctor Doom. I think mm. he's gonna be the one that unveils Doctor Doom in the MCU. And I believe in like how you said, uh, Deuces, I'm going to let you say you had a prediction as to how, who, who and where the Fantastic Four will first be seen. So go so, ahead and let us know. So with the with Kane coming and then with Wakanda forever. My, so here's my 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 big this is like my biggest prediction and thought process that I've been thinking, because I said right now they still have not dropped the word mutants. Right. And knowing what Wakanda forever is. Right. When you think about the first Black Panther, it did a lot of world building of Wakanda and Black Panther. They didn't really do too much outside outside of Killmonger trying to get back to there. But it was really about the internal fight. Of in, in, in Wakanda, so Wakanda forever. And to me, with the the way that the title is set up, it's like okay, we need to establish that like Wakanda's imprint in this world, their force within this world. So my thought process, and I think that Wakanda forever is going to be kind of like Eternals. They're going to have a lot going on, but I believe that they're going to introduce Storm in Wakanda forever. I mean, I know that uh, M uh, Michaela Cole, she's been. Uh, she's on with kind of forever. They still have not said what her character is going to be, but I do believe that they're going to introduce Storm, and I do believe that we get our first introduction into Reed Richards. Um, like I said, now it's not necessarily the Fantastic Four as a group, but we got well, you know that in the comics they have that run where the Fantastic Four fights against you know Black Panther, but Reed Richards and his inquiring mind, I believe that we get introduced to who read with like just like a like a either a name drop or you see the person but i do believe that with wakanda forever they're going to establish mutants they're going to establish storm and they're going to establish like oh we have a reed richard and i think that that's all going to be front loaded in wakanda forever they got so all mutants at the same time they can't just introduce one mutant without an explanation of how they got mutant powers they're going to, they're going to come from a different universe well, yeah. technically, technically, no, technically, the first mutant has been introduced. Yeah, already. Scarlet uh, Witch. Uh, which one? So, Scarlet, Scarlet Witch. Witch. Oh, well, then that's no. Well, then that that's one. Her children are two, so actually four. Because she, she, she got her powers from a powers from an Infinity Stone in this universe. No, 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 no. no. She was. Uh, she already had power. She, she already was already power. a witch. She the the stone enhanced them in this yeah. MCU, right, right, so right. it gave her the it increased them. But the other one is also in Black Widow. Do you remember the scene where uh, 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 the Russian guy was doing the uh, arm wrestling and stuff? The oh, last yeah. one whose arms he broke? Yeah. That is actually Bear, the dude that can transform into a full-out bear. So he is actually 
of mutants. So yeah. he's already in the MCU. So, so just like Adusa said, they're not using that word yet. Yeah, and I think mm-hmm. that this is going to be the first inclination of that word because once they introduce Storm, Storm is the queen of Wakanda, and they kind of got to go through that. My thought process of is that okay? They're probably we're not we're not going to get the 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 next Black Panther mantle like we're going it's going to go it's going to have to go through trials so who better to run those trials than then storm or who to the, the be head of that a part of the family you got this person and again like i said i think that when she explains her backstory that's when the mutant word gets dropped it doesn't have to be it's not going to introduce everybody but she's going to explain her backstory because somebody's going to be like wait why should we follow in your footsteps or whatever you know why do you have this right to this throne and and then just on some on some black America type stuff in in reality, like you, you got all these black women that are doing amazing things. Why wouldn't they want to give um, Storm the Black Panther mantle? Because in timeless, oh. in timeless, in the comics, Kang the Conqueror, he's searching different universes, and they didn't necessarily say it yet. But if you watch, if you look in, in, in that panel, they show he's like, I see the next Black Panther, and you see this long white flowing hair. We all know who that is. So in the comic book, Storm actually does become the next Black Panther as well. I this believe is. that that we I believe that we can go that route. This is. Here, here, here's my here's, am, I, am I stretch off? Oh, if you if you if you, you are reaching. smoking that narcotic, if yeah. you think that sure they're going that. to show Storm <laughs> and then make her the Black Panther. Immediately. <laughs> you are on the strongest of the narcotics. That's now, what I will that's give that's you, I'm reaching. I will give you a soul region. <laughs> I will give you Storm possibly making an appearance. I mean, I could have given you that she would have possibly made an appearance had Chadwick, rest in peace, not passed away. That would have been a given. It would have been beautiful. However, the thing that I'm going to disagree with, why is because there's a reason Scarlet Witch is in Multiverse of Madness. Now, as we all know, especially by being a DC fan like I am, what they did, let's take the TV universe, which is the weaker universe, but it's the TV universe. What they did was, all right, look, Supergirl was filming on CBS. We got her on CW. How can we bring her into the same world of the Flash and Arrow? They had the uh, the Crisis of Infinite Earths. Yeah, all of these things brought them to one planet. Yep. Right now, I don't doubt that a similar thing done way better would happen in Marvel Doctor Strange Multiverse of Madness because of what he had already done with Spider-Man to fall out. Now he's got Scarlet Witch's help. Why would he ever ask a lesser magician, what well, magician, a lesser uh, <laughs> witch warlock form to help him if this wasn't the overall plan? And what they do, I guarantee you, is going to bring mutants into this world. I doubt it'll be the exact same. It'll be the stronger actors from the X-Men franchise, but it won't be you know, the people right. from first class. It's a lot coming our way. And as we can see with us yeah, talking about this, we got a lot of predictions coming our way. But I will say, no matter if it was, you know, throwing that fishing net out there, trying to reach, <laughs> or even giving <laughs> some mind blowing ones, I just want to say each and every one of y'all gave out some incredible predictions. And, and definitely, just like how CT said, opened up a lot more possibilities based off of the perception y'all have from here. And I hope we all did the same for y'all that are watching here today. And so I want to thank each and every one of y'all for checking this out. Let us know in the comments as well what your predictions are. But before we get out of here, though, I always want to make sure that my guests get a chance to spotlight themselves and let people know what's happening. I'm going to start off with Young Deuces. We're going to move over to... (laughs) Dion, and then of course, last and certainly not least, Mr. CT. So, this is you, <laughs> man. What's going on, man? Again, man, thank you for having me. Man, this was amazing. Right now, man, we're working on our season five of One on One with Deuces. I'm going to be starting that up on the 22nd of this month. Um, and like you said, got a couple of interviews lined up. You know, um, the way we drop them, we drop them on our um, on our Instagram and our and our social media. So, if you go to at Geek Set Podcast, that's how you'll be able to see who's coming up. 
up and and how we drop it. We try to do it like the week of or the week before. Uh, but you know, the one of the first people that I'm uh, that I'm dropping on the 22nd is David Crownson. He created Harriet Tubman Demon Slayer, the comic book that's going to be turned into a show by Prentice Penny, the showrunner of uh, Insecure. So it's really dope and had a really dope conversation with him. Um, and then you know, on our YouTube, man, we drop our podcast every two weeks again it's geek set podcast the only podcast that blend hip-hop culture and geek culture together in one place we talk about everything anime hip-hop comic books video games and we go in depth in the way that we sound like now when we talk about geek stuff um and then on our twitch man twitch.tv backslash geek set mondays and tuesdays my guy bacardi and Diz they twitch and then we you know we just randomly jumping on if you want to jump on with us on knockout city man follow us because you know that's what we rocking right now heavily um and then yeah man you know geek set rewind is another show that we got coming soon that's where we watch anime and give our live reactions to it so it's like we got a couple of shows we're trying to build our our network and try to build everything that we got so if you follow at young underscore deuces or at geek set podcast or just go to our website geeksetpodcast.com and you'll get all the updates and information about what we're doing and where we're going to be at and everything so yeah man i appreciate everybody who comes from this stream and i do appreciate y'all yes sir Dean, leon you you are <laughs> 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 Oh, this nigga is shirtless shorty 03. <laughs> shirtless shorty. T-I-L-A-C-K. It got hot real quick, man. I'm sorry. Um, I have a game show coming out very soon. Um, that, that's it, man. Drink your water one time for the people. Drink your water, yeah. <laughs> Book your hat, no shirt on. I got money. <laughs> You are the greatest of all time, bro. Oh my God. Oh my God. Listen, guys, first of all, Will, thank you so much for having me. I'm honored anytime you hit me to be a part of anything, man. Um, shout out to the to the arcade tokens, you guys are the greatest. Um, I just dropped a comic book called The Misadventures of CT. If you would like to check it out, issue number two is on its way. It's completely hey. different to issue one. I'm building a universe. Um, yes, The Misadventures of CT. If you would like to check it out, go to uh, Linktree slash CT is dope, where you can find everything CT. I'm kind of still on hiatus from content, but I'm about to shoot some more, and it'll be to the people soon. Same CT all day. Hey. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And as always, man, y'all know where to find me. A uh, few things have changed. Like I said, you can always find all of my socials. It's Will Farrow on my YouTube. It's the same thing, but we are now WP Media. That is right. Mm. It's now being expanded into my own production company, of course. Stepping out, doing content. And like I said, man, folks like these guests I've had here today are those that inspire me to really step into my own and keep walking my individual path. So you will continue to see straight out of a comic book, Farrow vault new format coming for pharaoh's vault can't wait to have these folks on here for the podcast edition definitely gonna tell y'all about that um in just a little but yeah check out that make sure you check out my twitch every wednesday 7 30 uh that'll also be coming in we had a heels to jesus hour with myself and lou g our let's play and of course if you want to learn some graphics with me and the legion come on down to my twitch at 7 30 p.m pacific standard time and of course eastern standard Y'all already know what time that is. That's 10 for y'all. And then, of course, my album that will be dropping this year, 80s Hell of a Night. Get ready for that, man. So I can't wait. I'm excited. And so I just, again, I want to thank my guests for coming in, Young Deuces, Dion Lack, and, of course, CT. It is always a pleasure to be with y'all. That's why this episode is almost three hours, because this is what happens <laughs> when you got dope individuals talking hey. about something they love. And I can't wait till we start talking about DC. <laughs> so... <laughs> follow these folks follow myself support do what you can thank you so much for checking it out and again in the comments below let us know your predictions for marvel 2022's cinematic universe and disney plus i have been the anomaly will Farrow, and we will catch you next time to the loop. <laughs>